as most of you know, Dr. Caldwell received the Stockholm Water Prize less than two weeks ago on September 9th in Sweden. And some of you here today were there to witness that very regal ceremony where she received the prize from the King of Sweden. The awards committee recognized her pioneering research in waterborne diseases, particularly for her work in the prevention of cholera. And when I first heard that she received this award several months ago, I was so excited that I immediately requested a meeting with Dr. Caldwell. I wanted to ask her if we could host this event to keep the momentum going from Sweden. And by those of you here in the room, I think we're accomplishing that. And so I, I asked the question, what's so significant about this award that we're so excited this morning? Well, the award recognizes the interconnectedness between climate, water, and public health issues. And as someone who's worked in both the environmental and public health worlds, I see a great opportunity to help educate policymakers on dealing with these issues in a more holistic fashion. So it's interesting this morning that we're honoring someone whose accomplishments and recognition and activity has been so thoroughly global and international, and yet she's a local girl. She lives here. <laughs> and many of you have known her for a long time, so it's a, it's a nice occasion this morning where instead of speaking in a distant way about people who we really never met, uh, many of us this morning feel that this is especially nice because we know her, she lives and works here, and she's been a leader locally as well as a colleague. So I'd like to also introduce Dr. Rita Caldwell. One of the most important things we can do, all of us, is to provide safe drinking water for all people throughout the world, especially developing countries. 20% of the people in Cambodia do not have access to safe water. And the death rate for children under the age of five is something in the order of 200 per thousand. If we were able to use um, a simple filter, sari cloth as it turned out, we were able to educate the women that use sari cloth, folded four or five times, as determined by electron microscopy, gave a very effective filter. Um, like Dr. Cicerone, I have a, a personal uh, relationship with uh, Rita Caldwell. She has been my mentor for 25 years. Thank you, Rita. One thing that I've learned is um, a mentor doesn't tell you what she knows. Uh, she points you to discovering what she knows. And uh, she has, uh, I remember um, distinctly 24 years ago when she said, uh, Ivor, why don't you look for those pathogens in the Chesapeake Bay? <laughs> <laughs> and we did. And uh, it's been my privilege to be uh, uh, mentored by Rita for, uh, for all these years. Thank you very much. Um, I want to introduce uh, a couple of gentlemen here from uh, Canon U.S. Life Sciences, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Takeyoshi Hanagata mm -hmm. and Mr. Uh, Hiroshi Inoue, who uh, are members of our uh, corporate uh, team at uh, Canon U.S. Life Sciences. And on behalf of Mr. Joe Adachi, who is president of Canon Americas, and Mr. Fujio Mitarai, who is chairman and CEO of Canon Inc., uh, it's our pleasure to congratulate Rita Caldwell on the award of the 2010 Stockholm Water Prize. The Maryland Asia Environmental Partnership, Canon U.S. Life Sciences, and all your friends here would like to present you a photograph by Japan's leading landscape photographer, Toshinobu Takeuchi. This landscape depicts one of the five lakes at the base of Mount Fuji with the mountain in the background. Fujisan is revered, uh, revered by Japanese as a sacred embodiment of nature itself, and we hope it will always remind you of your contribution to the environment and your partnership with Japan. This kind of gets at the heart of the nexus of connecting the dots between climate, water, and public health. And so as the moderator, I'm going to be asking some specific questions of our audience uh, that will talk to that. And I hope to be able to choreograph and, and weave the thread through these issues so that we can come up with some solutions towards the end.
climate change is going to impact uh, everywhere. It, is, it will impact human life, agriculture, animal, even in bacteria. Dr. Caldwell showed during the summer months in Chesapeake Bay when uh, water temperature goes up, we see more vibrios. Uh, rest of the time, we don't see them. Doesn't mean that they are not there. Sort of like frogs put in a pot and slowly the heat goes up and we don't notice it. Well, in the case of Perihemolyticus, with the warmer temperatures, for the first time in history, Alaska and Seattle have had outbreaks of this food poisoning associated with shellfish. And we are seeing that same phenomenon occurring in the Bay. So it's happening, but we're not paying attention to it. The other thing that I would like to emphasize is that with extreme storm events, um, you get a breakdown in the sewage treatment plant, uh, as happened in Milwaukee a few years ago. Um, and there were s several deaths from cryptosporidium, particularly for the immunocompromised and those on cancer therapy, uh, and hence immunocompromised. So um, in, in, with Katrina, we had a complete smashing up of water treatment plants and sewage treatment plants. As the events become more severe and we, we get droughts in one part of the country and flooding in another part, um, I think uh, public health officials have got to begin to think about the extreme events and the probability of them occurring even more. About five million children a year die of dysentery needlessly, uh, a complete waste. And so when you look at, if you only look at the economic impact of those, that generational death, it's a tremendous loss uh, for all the countries where that's taking place. I think we're going to see a different view of infectious disease coming from the studies that we've been doing with the environment, the human, and public health. And finally, one of the, I don't know whether to call it a benefit, it's not a good term, one of the outcomes of 9-11 is that what was a deteriorating infrastructure of public health is now finally getting attention. And so the resurgence in public health schools, the resurgence in the number of them have increased, and the investment in public health is, a, is I think, a good outcome. Really no such thing as wastewater. We just put water someplace else. So we have to educate the public in all countries, developing countries and developed countries because of our concerns now with uh, micro constituents and pharmaceuticals and a lot of th things that are trace organics. In Maryland, we've got, uh, through predictive models, uh, maps that will show you the projected flooding that the state would be uh, expecting by the year 2050. And so for those of you that are familiar with the map of Maryland, Dorchester County, areas along the Atlantic coast are shown as completely inundated. Global warming probably means more water in the air than, you know, retained in the, in the land. For, for many regions, especially developing regions, uh, there are seasons that there are excessive water that they can't retain the land. There's a war going on in water right now, and we may not realize it, but we're affected by it. And that is the war between the marketing of bottled water versus public water. And the bottled water industry has a lot of money uh, to put towards convincing us that our public water supplies are not safe uh, and that they're of questionable quality. Uh, unfortunately, the public sector hasn't been as responsive and aren't typically marketing people and don't have the resources or haven't applied the resources to fight this battle back. Communicating to different stakeholder groups is essential. And I think, you know, when scientists are communicating to scientists and scientists are communicating to government agencies, that's very important. But I think we need to really think about communicating to the general public. And that is a role that I think we can play a very good role at. Thank you very much for being here this morning. I'd like to thank our panel, uh, in particular this morning, for a great presentation.